going on? Nothing, nothing. What are you doing? Uh, right now, not a damn thing. Nice. That's exciting. You know, sometimes it's good just, just to chill out. Oh, yeah. I'm outside. I'm on my computer. Just relaxing. I'm probably going to watch a movie after this. So Anything good? I, I promised my friend I'd watch a lot more horror movies because I just started getting into the horror genre. I watched three this week. All right. Well, well hit it off. What would you watch? Anything good? Um, I saw The Hunt. Okay. Which was really cool. Like I, I'm starting to enjoy those kind of horror movies like that, the Belko experiment, things like that nature. I guess of course it's a squid game, but Okay. Um The Hunt uh was one of them. Um not too many big people in it, but Hillary Swank was in it, which was weird. Yes. Um I saw Ready or Not. Oh, Ready or Not was good. It was really good actually. I enjoyed that. Yeah, Adam Brody was in that. Yes. Um, So was um, Andy McDowell. Yes. Um, And then the last one I saw movies-wise, like scary, was uh, Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods was intense. That was with uh, Tony Goldwyn, right? Yes, and Chris Hemsworth. Okay, cool. I'm trying to... Cabin in the... (sighs) Fuck. I'm trying to think. Are you thinking of Cabin Fever? What's that? Are you thinking of Cabin Fever? No, no, no. Is <sighs> Cabin in the Woods, is that the one where they run the dude's daughter or they do they sexually assault the dude's daughter? Oh, that's another one you're thinking. I know which one you're thinking of. It's not that one. Um, okay. That's the one with Virginia Madsen. I think so, yeah. And Paul is in it too. I know. And he I, just, I he see just the- fucks them up at the end? Yes. Okay. Now, this one, um, Cabin in the Woods, they go to this cabin and um, they um, go into the basement, pick something, and it ends up being like a show for people. They're watching it. Like they control all the, like, it's like they control all the horror things. This is where all the horror genres came from. Okay. Um, and they just start picking them off. They have to kill them to save the world, I guess. They have to all die, the people that are in the cabin. It, it's pretty freaky. Really? Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of the one you're thinking of. Yeah, hold on. Let me. Uh, so you saw the Belko experiment, right? I love the Belko experiment. Okay, I saw the trailer and I was, I was like, yeah, that's just looks like it's intense as fuck. Oh, it, it gets crazy because you would, you would, enjoy, if you like movies like that, it's really intense. All right. So the movie I was thinking about was The Last House on the Left. Yes, that's the and, one. And it's oh yeah, Tony Goldwyn is in this. It, Garrett Dillahunt looks like he's the main villain, and Monica Potter is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the daughter was it the uh, Martha McIsaac? I I don't know if she was the daughter, the girl from Superbad. Oh okay. Was Aaron Paul in that one? Because I remember Aaron Paul is in this. I don't remember much about this movie. I just remember they sexually assault this dude's daughter, and then he just. I remember him putting one dude's head in a microwave yes and just like exploding his head i don't remember if that was aaron paul or not that was the kid the kid from sixth sense was in that too wasn't he possibly i'm looking at this cast it's a good cast gareth dillahan monica potter tony goldwyn uh aaron paul young this was yeah this was right when breaking bad started so yeah good good cast i think the kid from sixth sense was in it too not Uh, sorry not sixth sense unbreakable um, da, 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 da. I'm looking at the cast here. Uh, Josh, I'm not familiar with anybody else. Sarah Paxton, I know who she is. She's been in a couple things. Although I'm gonna look it up myself right now because I. <laughs> All right. Well, while you're doing that, I'll just I cite that I saw Dune over the weekend. How? And, oh, it was fucking awesome, uh, and I'm glad the news hit that it, it got the sequel got greenlit. And that'll probably be a couple of years before we get that one, I think. I think it'll be like t- a little over two years. They said 2023 is the release for that. Okay. Yeah. So probably this time two years from now. Okay. So I'm in. It was it was really good. Timothy, I thought Timothy Chalamet was really good. Had a lot of big names and small roles. Like Dave Bautista was in it for maybe five minutes. Uh, we had Javier Bardem in it for just a couple minutes. Stellan Sarsgaard was one of the villains, but he wasn't in it very long. 
they, it looked like uh, Denny Villeneuve was kind of just flexing by having all these big names in the movie for a couple minutes. But if we're getting two more, which I think it's, I believe it's a trilogy, probably a lot of these bigger names are going to be in bigger parts in the, the following two. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I got to watch. I haven't got to watch it yet, but I'm excited to see it. Um, going really back, going back really quick. Spencer Treat Clark is his name, and he was in Unbreakable. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, this didn't have a big cast. There was only like ten people in it. And uh, holy, I'm looking at his IMDb now. There's a Gladiator two. Yeah, apparently, I I just saw that myself when I was looking at it. And I was like. Okay. It has Ridley Scott attached to direct, and this guy is the only cast cast member listed. <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't know. Oh, he's the kid from Gladiator. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. So it's all making sense now. I never knew this this kid's name, so I'm learning things right now, and hope hopefully the listeners are learning things too. <laughs> uh, uh, which uh, watch? What's that? Anything else you get to watch? So yeah, I was gonna. I wasn't gonna cite this because I think I cited it last week. But uh, Dope Sick, again, the latest episode. I think I. Ta- I think I talked about that on here before with Michael Keaton, Caitlin Deaver. But I'm only gonna cite it this week because we. I. I think I sent you a picture last night when I was watching it. Our boy. Our, yep, our boy uh, Al Sapienza, aka Mikey Palmisi, showed up in the latest episode. Oh. He was uh he was a lawyer for there was a character who was um she was she was a Purdue Pharma employee and she became a drug addict and she was gonna like flip on them and Mikey Palmisi was uh, her lawyer. I gotta so, yeah. oh, the buzz on that show is crazy. It's good, yeah. I was I think I either this one or was it that bad podcast? I I quote I cited Dope Sick. But I, I had I had to I had to mention it on here because of our boy. Oh. <laughs> All right, cool. So we got some good uh, horror recommendations there. Uh, anyone listening, I would recommend watching Dune. I believe it's, you know, if if you got to watch it at home because you're not comfortable going to a theater, awesome. That's respect. But this was a movie. I was glad I went to the theater and saw it as opposed to watching it on my laptop. Uh, it looked like the type of movie you have to watch in the theater because it needs that. It needs those effects. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, if I if I rewatch it, I'm not going to go to a theater. I'll watch it um, at home. But yeah, definitely uh, a movie probably better served in a theater. All right, cool. So what uh what episode are we talking about today? Isabella. Nice. All right, so we're twelve. We've covered the first twelve episodes so far, or we're about to cover the twelfth and wrapping up season one here this is where a lot of shit goes down in this episode we got tony's just a fucking mess right now he's like really depressed about pussy's just mia is he dead what's going on uh jimmy's probably a rat but we don't know yet uh juniors put the wheels in motion just a lot going on what are your initial thoughts on on this episode this episode was definitely it was a setup episode, but it wasn't like an original, like a usual setup episode because there was a lot going on in this. Um, you mentioned a couple of facts. You see Christopher trying really hard to help his uncle. Well, his so-called Uncle Tony. Right. Um, you you see him following him and everything. You see the um, the attempt at his life, and and you see Livia again being being Livia, and yeah, it's such a it's such a powerful episode and it just, it, it was one of, it's one of my favorites of the season. Um, it's up there um, with a lot of the stuff that goes on. It's got a nice like uh call back to the Godfather in one of the scenes. Yes. Um, kind of like a play on words with it. Um you see everybody trying to help him and you just like you said he's deep in a depression right now because still can't find pussy see what's going on with him doesn't know if he's got a rat in the house doesn't doesn't know anything like he's just like doesn't want to be bothered with anything like he just wants to stay in bed and to the po- to the point where he melfi's got him his medications is is increased right. Yep, increasing and 
to the point where I'm, we're going to talk about the 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 namesake of this episode, Isabella. We're we're definitely going to talk about that, but to the point where his medication combined with his depression, it's forced him to imagine this person who doesn't exist. And 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 a big part of it, going a little going a little ahead of ourselves, but the attempt at his life really like just puts him right back in. And you just see after that. He's back. He's back to being Tony again. Yeah, yeah. That was like the uh, the five hour energy that that, uh, that he needed just to get back on track. Oh. But yeah, yeah. Why don't we Why don't we just uh, just dive right in? We're gonna take a quick break and then we'll start talking about our favorite scenes. Hey everybody, thank you for listening to this podcast. And if you're someone like me who at one point did not know how to make a podcast, you can try the Anchor app. It is free. There are tools right on the app to help you make your podcast. It is super easy to use. They will distribute your podcast for you on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and other major platforms. If you want to make money from your show, you can do that with no minimum listenership. And it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. You can download the Anchor app for free in your app stores or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right. Uh, best scenes. So I have an even five noted down here. The first one that I have is uh, we so we see earlier in the episode the the two guys who are contracted to kill Tony. They go to kill Tony, but Chris inadvertently, not um, not intentionally, intervenes in the hit just by parking in front of these guys. So the hit doesn't go down, and we we later see. Uh, junior and he's with Mikey and Chucky and he, he's, he's really distressed over what happened. We actually see him vomit on the side of the road out of the car. And then this guy, Donnie, who I guess is the broker for, for these guys attempting to kill Tony. He makes kind of an offhand comment about Tony's mother wanting him clipped and junior doesn't like this. So what happens next? Junior becomes petty and he does what he does best and he knocks off somebody because of a comment. Yeah, yeah. Just just kind of just like an offhanded remark. And even Mikey, even Mikey, who's not really shy about killing people, Mikey just says, Junior says, no, I don't I don't like it. And Mikey's like, no, no, he's he's fine. And you're just like, I I don't like it. Next time he could be making jokes about me. And just they just kill this guy dead. Mikey just shakes his head. Tells him to stop and then says sorry and shoots him right in the face. Yeah, he he you know, he's a soldier. He's not gonna he's not gonna question anything and he does what Junior tells him to do there. That is a very good scene. Yeah. So what uh what's one you liked? The scene, um, I have a few, but I'm gonna go first with the scene with um at lunch with Isabella. Okay. Now this is a one of my favorite scenes of the episode. Uh, that's why I'm bringing it up first. You see them just talking and eating and everything. And, like, she's gorgeous. Like, and you see how he is with gorgeous women. Yeah. And you see how he's, a, like, big flirt. He cheats. You, We all know this. He has so many gumas. But he looks at her as the mother figure. And it's just so, like, you know, you see him... You see, you see him like first. He's like attracted, but then he has that vision of her breastfeeding the baby, right? And then he just stops and just starts asking her questions about herself instead of anything like he would usually do when he's trying to be with one of the women. And it's just, it's such a touching scene because that's all he wants. He wants that mother figure. He's always wanted that mother figure, and he, I guess, he's seeing her as a mother figure because he's she's there to comfort him and we see the contrast we see the contrast between and i think this might have been his subconscious this is where she came from because we we see in this episode this is where an attempt is made on tony's life by his real mother so this this figure could have been just drawn from his psyche wanting like a positive mother figure in his life exactly so that's why it was one of my favorite scenes of the episode all right good scene here um I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I said you got another one for us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't we just get into the uh, the hit or the the botched hit? So, Such theme. Yeah. So God. the you, I think you had mentioned a, a Godfather reference. Were you yeah. talking about Vito with the orange juice? Yes, I would. Well, no, he had oranges. Vito. He okay. Had, 
too. So that was kind of like, like I said, it was a play, but it was like that same thing at the newsstand where it happens. Yeah. It was also a botched attempt because Vito didn't die in that scene. Right. And neither, neither did Tony. Tony, in fact, fucks these guys up really bad. Like the one guy, he sh- first he shoots his orange. We see his orange juice. He, he shoots his orange juice, very inconsiderate because he was probably thirsty. That yeah. was, and then, you know, back then those glass Tropicana bottles, they were amazing. I used to love them. They tasted great out of that. They don't make those anymore. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> because of these guys, they ruined it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> But he shoots him. Tony gets it. Tony gets into his truck. He kind of wrestles with him a little bit, and then is the other the other guy. Just I don't know what he was shooting. What do you, what did he think was going to happen? Maybe he I, kills I, Tony, but it he's probably going to kill his friend. That was the most poorly shot. If I'm that close, how am I hitting? My, how am I shooting to the right of him? I just right. I, I here, but I shot my friend in the face. So he kills his friend, and you know I got nitpicks here, but I, we'll just get into him now. Um, so the second guy, he kind of just falls, stumbles away. Tony crashes. Presumably this guy could have went back, finished the job. I had that as my nitpick too. I was like, why could, I, I didn't understand it. Like you're right there. You still have the gun. Yeah. You, he's crashed. He's out. You could just go boom. It's done. Yeah. Tony's defenseless. You got him. Just, just do roll, what you got to do. Roll credits. The series is over. <laughs> And then, you know, probably unanswerable questions. And we'll, we'll, I think this is, we'll deal with this with uh, a Russian individual around season three. But oh, what, yes. Whatever happened to this guy? Did, did he, did he run off? Is he alive? Uh, we definitely don't see him again. That is a major nitpick I have with the show. Yeah. Yeah. And David Chase does this a lot, you know, where we'll see, we would see like in other shows, for instance, that they, wouldn't want to leave a loose end untied. So we got to bring this guy back or we got to bring the Russian back getting way ahead of myself here. But these are things that David Chase doesn't do because he doesn't really do fan service. No. And and that's uh, two. Like there's another character like that too, that we, that just disappears and we don't hear anything about either. Yeah. Yeah. He he does this a lot. He's in five. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. What's another scene you had? All right. Uh, I had a shooting scene. Where is it? The scene in the car between Melfi and uh, Tony. I got this. What uh, stood out about that for you? You finally see the depression go away. Like, you see he's different. First, he's asking questions to make sure, like, you know, was anything done because he wants to find out if there was an attempt on his life because of them finding out about him being in therapy. Um, and you just, and then you get, there's a quote I have in here. I'm going to use it now. Sure. Um, we get to it. So he does say, and, and Melfi in this scene, like insinuates that Livia might've been involved in the hit. And Tony just shuts that down right away. He, he either, I don't think he doesn't believe it. He doesn't want to believe it. No, because she's, she's right. Like, you know, she picks up on it really quick. Like, oh, the amnesia and everything. Like, you know, this is certain. But he's like, no, that's my mother. You had to see the way she looks. Right. Right. Yeah, the, she, she was just acting. Yes. Yeah. And, and like you see, you'll see that further um, when junior approaches her later on uh in the nursing home about right. it but um the quote i had sure. um you know when i was depressed i didn't i didn't want to live well i'll tell you something i didn't want to die and Great i quote. did everything in my fucking power i was fighting to live like you know like he really realized like you know the depression that he has how bad can it, like, you know, he realized I, I wanted to be dead. And as soon as I had the chance to be dead, I wanted the fight to be alive. Right. Yeah. He was borderline suicidal in the yes. beginning of this episode. And then when, you know, death actually confronted him, he did. He fought like hell just to get through this. And yeah, was, I thought that was a really, I had that in my quotes too. Really good quote. I, um. What's another scene you got? I got uh, after the hit. We have a we have a little. I guess it's like a 
brunch or lunch at Tony's house. We got Sil, Chris, Paulie, and then Junior and Livia show up. Yes. So it was a good scene. And, you know, everybody kind of knows that it was Junior. Uh, I think I forget it was Paulie or Silvio. Silvio says it had to have been Junior. And then we see Livia. She started, she gets Meadow's name wrong. I think she called Meadow Conchetta. Yeah, he goes. That's not good, Chad. That's your that's your granddaughter. Yeah, yeah. So she's totally faking. We see Junior. He kind of gives a look, like you know, what the what the fuck are you doing? And uh, yeah, it's clear. Uh, Livy is kind of playing the long game here. Oh yeah, yeah. So I guess we could segue into another scene I have, which is I had this because we have a lot of Junior Livia scenes, but I have the third one that you you referenced earlier, where okay. he, he confronts her. Yep. And what's this? You're pretending not to know your own granddaughter. And she, she, what she says, she's like, I can't find my slipper. And he's like, fuck your slipper. It's like, oh, yeah. He's just, you know, you, you see him flipping it up because he realizes at that moment she's trying to make him a scapegoat. Yeah. Like, yeah. He had nothing to do with anything. Right. And she's just, she's villainous. Let me tell you, there's a lot of villains on TV. She might be one of the best. Yeah, and she knows that we're we're not going to go too far ahead into the next episode, but a certain thing that happens in the next episode, if it doesn't happen, then she probably will get away with it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Then they would. He wouldn't have. They both would have got away with it. I don't know if Junior would, because I, I, I don't think he thought Junior was when he came there. I, I, I tell my feeling was, I think he was like clear on everything because he was still trying to think. I, I don't, I think both of them would have been scot free if that tape did not come out. It's possible. It, it's, it's definitely possible. I would say, I would say 50 50 on Junior. Definitely Livia. I, I, I'll go with the 50 50 on Junior with you, but Livia would have been completely scot free. Yeah. And we're definitely going to, that's not going to be the last we talk about this. We're, we're going to go deep into this next week. Uh, I have that as my don't forget about it. Okay, cool. Excellent. Um, let me think. I got yeah, those are all my scenes that I had. I got one I got one more. All right. Uh, little scene. Which one the... is it? What? I'm sorry. I, uh, what scene was it? The hospital scene? Oh, okay. But it sounds like the part the part with Carmela, Agent Harris, and Tony. Okay. Because you see him trying to right away turn him. Like, you know, like as soon as it happened, they're in there trying to turn him. State evidence. Oh, I'll give you immunity. And then Carmel is thinking about it. And nope, not going to happen. Like you see through and through, he's got he's got his thing that he sticks by. I think he even said it in there. Like, you know, um, you know, you got your kids to you. Your kids rely on you. And I'm the only father they have. Tony Soprano, this is me. So he's not, he's, you, you see it not, I'm not going to rat. I'm not going to do any of that. I don't give a shit. It'll be taken care of my way. Right. And I have a, I have a nit, little nitpick about that because what did Agent Harris think was going to happen there? He's not a dumb guy. No, I, I, it was really like, you know, silly timing. Like, see, I would have waited for that when they had the, the, the thing we find out about in the next episode. Right. And, Another, but like another nitpick that I had about that was they're trying they're trying to get lower level guys to get Tony. What what are they going to get Tony? Who they who's Tony going to flip on? Junior is that what was that their long game? Well, I, I you see that well because he's 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 the fish that they want. Yeah, but you bring it in. You 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 mention that, and then you think about something that you know they talk about in the end of the episode of season one. Okay, when they start when they're talking to Junior. Yeah. So you see that they want somebody more than they want Jersey. They want New York more than they want Jersey. Okay. All right. So that's what they could be using for to try and get everything. All right, I'll, I'll take that. All right, so that's it. I think we're both done on scenes, right? Yeah, I'm all done on my scenes. All right, quotes. I got a, I got a few here. Uh, I like when Silvio and Chris are talking, and uh, <laughs> Silvio just says a lot. Of, a lot of top guys have dark moods. He's like the Winston Churchill. He drank a quart of brandy before, before breakfast. Napoleon. He was a moody fuck too. <laughs> so they're they're just comparing Tony to, you know, 
big leaders in history, Churchill and Napoleon. I had that as well. I thought that was a great, like the way he quoted that. Um, because, yeah, when you're at the top, it's very lonely at the top. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I think that's what he's trying to relate to Christopher because Christopher's worried about his mental his mental status, which, in all fairness, he should be because it's pretty shitty in the beginning of the episode. But anybody who is a leader a, in any situation definitely has to feel that, that pressure and that pain because it, it's hard being on top. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, what's, what's one you had? Uh, I got one from Tony. Um, I, I enjoyed this one. I thought it was really funny. I'm like King Midas in reverse. Everything I touch turns to shit. <laughs> that's it. That's a, that's on my list as well. Yeah, good quote. And it's kind of like one that resonates. It's like, I remember it before we even started doing a rewatch for this show. That was like a quote that is, is cemented in my brain. That's one of the few. Yeah, that was a really, I enjoyed that. You, you see him. Because he, he's sitting in, the, I think he's sitting in therapy when he's talking about it. And he just looks like, just like, blah. <laughs> What's another uh, quote you got? I got, um, I, this one's from Junior at the scene where um, Mikey and uh, Chucky are telling Junior at this funeral that the hit's in motion. And Junior just kind of doesn't, just kind of just wants to know what's happening, but doesn't really want details. Tells him, uh, you know, if I delegate, I delegate. But before that, he sees a prayer card and he goes, when I, when I was a little kid, I used, I always used to wonder why nobody collected prayer cards, like to collect baseball cards, thousands of bucks for Honus Wagner, Jack shit for Jesus. <laughs> so that, that was a good quote. Another junior one liner. Like it just, yeah, we're going to, I mean, there were a good amount of these in season one, but season two is, I think season two is probably his best season. I would have to agree. Uh, I enjoyed season two with him. He really stepped. He was really, I think he might be the all-star of season two. But. It's possible. Definitely. Definitely in the running there. What's another one you had? Uh, I'm going to go to junior as well. Um, when um, Tony makes a nice comment to uh, father Infantola could that he's sleeping over. <laughs> I tried to change the subject. If anybody wants a drink, she is still. And then, uh, Uncle June's like, I'll take a chorus out if you if you're getting it, and I'll buy him one too. Yeah. <laughs> He's so old fashioned and stupid. His sense of humor is so bad that it's so funny, and right. that, that's what it. I, you know, we talked about that in the movie. He was like that in the movie. He's like, he's always been like that. Like you know, he's very good as far as funny and and abusing. But when he thinks he's being funny, he's he's not. When he tries to be. Right, right. It I, comes with like corny dad jokes. <laughs> yeah. Very good. And one I had here, we, t- we talked about Isabel a little bit. We're going to talk about her more. But before they have lunch, he is kind of flirting with her a little bit. Not like heavy flirting, but he, he gives a line to her. He goes, uh, if my she talks about how she's in dental school. And he says, uh, if my dentist looked like you, I'd stay awake during the root canal. <laughs> good good quote there. I got mm-hmm. one more, but do, do you have any more before I, I finish mine? I just got one. Uh, I got one more. Oh, no, wait. Um, I got two more, but I'll go with the first one. I'm going to go and it's a serious one. When uh, Jim, between Jimmy Altieri and Junior. Okay. This is the uh, opening. First scene, I think. Yeah, yes. They're talking about, uh, he's talking about Brandon Falone and like, you know, about the hit on Brandon Falone. Like, and Junior goes, don't let me, don't let me tell you about what I know. Don't yeah. worry. I know. Don't worry about, yeah, that, that just, he's starting to put together that he did something wrong. But at first he thinks it's just what the captains are talking about at the nursing home. Is Until- that what you think it was? Well, because he's he mentions that he does that with Mikey. Like, is that what they talk about in the nursing home? Okay, stuff that they do, and they don't bring it up because you see in the next episode during a scene, it's brought it up again, and this time it's more they certify it. Yeah, you know, you you make a good point because I didn't. I've I've watched this a couple times now, and I thought it was. Initially, I thought it was just, you know, don't worry about what I know, thinking I know you're a rat and we're just processing how we're going to deal with this. But, yeah, it could. Yeah, it could very well be. 
I think it was more a fact that he knows that they're doing something behind his back. Right. I think it was referring to in this one. In the next episode, that changes. But in this instance, I think it's he knows everything that, that's going on behind his back now. Yep. All right. So my last quote here is just a real, real, real short one. Uh, Gabagool over here. Yeah. <laughs> From Zell. And I think that's just like the subject of a lot of memes now. Oh yeah, that's that was that was. I love the way they are with the friggin' Italian meats and everything. Um, <laughs> uh, mine, is, uh, my last one I have is the scene when he's looking at the window and uh, Carmela catches him, and she goes to him basically, "If I had an ounce of self respect, I'd cut your dick off." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good quote there. Just uh, good fight with them that wasn't real. Oh yeah, and and then to find out everything that we find out after the fact. Yes, yeah, we're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna go into that. Uh, don't forget about it. So I got I got two of them here, and they kind of both involve uh, Junior and Livia. The first one is just their conversations in general. They're having conversations about the botched hit at the movie theater in the nursing home, and their conversations are gonna come to light soon. Okay. I, I got that, and I got, I got I actually got Tony's depression because it's not the last time we see a depression go with him. Okay, yeah, I like it. Good one. Uh, my other one I have here is Livia and Junior that when they're arguing, um, Livia says she's been forg- forgetting things, and she tells Junior specifically it, it's going to happen to you too. That's so, uh, you know what I didn't even catch that. That was good. Yeah, so that's uh, I, I mean, she's she's not wrong. So that's something we're gonna. And that's uh, I'll just I'll spoil now. Like, the thing I hate the most about this show is the fact that she's right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's. I mean, anybody who's listening to this podcast is obviously knows where most of these characters end up. And yeah, in this particular instance, is. My biggest gripe with the show, not from a writing standpoint, because I I, I thought it was good writing, but just it, it's just tough every time we're going to get we're going to go down this road season starting in season four a little bit and then five and six. And it, it's tough. Oh, yeah, I get it. it. It's it's the way they do it is pretty sad, but it happens, you know. Yeah. And it, it, I think it's symbolic of, you know, where most of these guys, how most of these guys wind up. So I don't have more. I'm done with that. We can go right into nitpicks here. So I just have my one thing here was uh, Isabella. And I I get it that it was a hallucination brought on by um, Tony's depression and the tinkering with his medications. But were these dreams or was Tony actually walking around thinking he was with this person was he sitting at a at a lunch table talking to an empty chair like uh the kid in six cents i i don't that that which funny is that's the only nitpick i have too is isabella um, okay and, and a lot of the things that we have like you know i i think to myself did tony ever get out of that shower right because did, did any of these scenes really like none of these scenes really happen like you know and you know, some scenes, some scenes were real, some scenes aren't, and they're all intertwined together. It's just like, you know, when, when he goes to talk to Kuzumano about uh, his dental exchange student, what are you talking about? The, the guy down the block came to just check on the animals or whatnot. And he was like, OK, and then going to Carmela, I, I would remember if I threatened to cut your dick off. Right. <laughs> like, you know, and, and right away that they real him and uh, Melfi realize it's the lithium that he started taking because they added lithium to his prescription. Right. So yeah. It- so inter- I mean, and it, it's David Chase. So it's it's ambiguous, like a lot of things he does. It's just we're we're left to figure it out for ourselves. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, eh. I know it's a, it's a frust- it's a frustrating thing because you want you want definitive answers, but I, we're left we're left here to just kind of speculate on a podcast. Well, I love the episode. Like this is a great episode, and then that one part of it just like aggravates me to no end because like you know it was like all of this was nothing. 
It was right. absolutely nothing. But it shows him dealing with his depression, I guess, helps him get out of the, building that character, maybe got him out of his depression a little bit, plus the attack. But it, it's just weird. It was, a, it, yeah, it was, it was a little, but it was just a couple scenes. You know what it made me think of? Did you watch Dallas? Yeah, who shot Jr. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. but but there was that one scene. There was that one where Bobby, quote unquote, died, and then they had a whole season where he was dead, and then it turned out that that the whole season was a dream. Yeah, that, I remember that because then you should they show him in the shower. Yeah, yeah. So we get that in this episode just for a couple scenes, and you're you're talking about how it was annoying, and yeah, I agree with you, it was annoying. But imagine a whole season where it's like <laughs> this was this this was all a dream. Same with, same with Roseanne, actually, if you think about it, because Roseanne, the whole last season, Dan was supposed to be dead. Dan, was that they won the lottery? Is that accurate? And Yes, they never really won the lottery either. None okay. of that. Everything was fake that whole season. And then they did a revival and he was back to life. Right. And they just they never referenced it. Right. Or did they reference it? They referenced it like, you know, like uh, they made a joke about it. OK, episode, but that was all you heard about it. But it was like it was another one where. It was a whole season long. An episode pissed us off with something. And like you said, just a few scenes. Those whole seasons were really friggin' stupid. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I agree. I don't even think, uh, I think the final season of the first run of Roseanne was maybe, what year did you graduate high school? Uh, I graduated, I think it was in 99. Okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm 99 too. So I guess we're, we're the same year. I Wait. think that. How that old? lottery season was senior year of high school. How old are you? Four, I just turned 40. Okay, then mine was, sorry, 01. Okay. I okay. Got there. But yes, 01. All right. Yes, yeah, so I remember that. I was a big Roseanne fan. And then that, that lottery season, I think I, I tapped out after like a couple episodes. I was, said, this is stupid. Oh, it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. Yeah, yeah. So even it wasn't as sophisticated a TV viewer at age 17, but I was like, this isn't good. <laughs> let's, let's move on. All right. So friends of ours, I have that kind of tied in with my questions, comments, concerns. It's all just like actors and their, their, their resumes here. Well, I have one. Um, I have two. Okay. I have two. I, I, I got here. John Eddins. I got him. Yeah. I got him tied into that. Well, he was in. He's in a show on uh, Prime, Amazon Prime, that I really love. Okay, Bosch. I I have that. I've had have that written down here. Yeah. Well, in that ep- in that show, there's a lot of HBO, uh, like the Wire people are in that episode. I know show. Marlo. Marlo is in it. So was um, the um, sergeant. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the why? Uh, fuck. Why am I drawing a blank? Oh, uh, I, 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 I'm going to look it up right now for you. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, that's going to bug me. Um, the, the Wendell Pierce, right? He's in that? Yes. No. Okay. no. Not Bunk? No, it's not Bunk. It's. What's his name? Come on. Hurry up with this stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is podcast day at its best. <laughs> us, this is the... people. Deal with it. <laughs> you get to listen to us search for things. Lance Reddick. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, Reddick. he's also on Oz. Why can't I think of his fucking name? All right, so we're we're failing in our audition for a Wire podcast after this. Oh, here goes. Yeah, there goes our there goes our follow up show. Yeah, uh, Daniels from the Wire. Agent. Oh yes, Captain Daniels. <laughs> there probably speaks. Ill, Ill of me that I, I can I can name every villain from the wire, but the cops were were just all kind of like blurred together. Well, I, I the only cop I really love is McNulty. Yeah, <laughs> Dominic yeah. West really really good at the, that show. Uh, Dominic West has done a lot of good things, but um, so yeah, he's had fifty two acting credits. This guy, so he's uh, he's been around for a while. He was also he also did a stint on Twenty Four as Agent. I got. So the three things I had written down for John Adams, I had Bosch. I don't watch. I don't watch Bosch. Not, I just. I just never. I'm not opposed to it. I just. It just the stars never aligned. Okay. And uh, I, he had a part in Iron Man three. Yes, he did. He was. Um, he was the bodyguard for the Mandarin. Okay. All right. Cool. So he's he's a, you know, not a household name, but he's a working actor. So 
sounds like he's had a pretty solid career. And then the other one I have is Maria Cucinata. Yep. I'm probably butchering her name. She's got a lot of, she's done a lot of acting in Italy, it looks like. Yeah, done- mostly, I, I have it written down here, mostly Italian films. And she was also in The World Is Not Enough, the James Bond movie. She was also in a TV movie, Brooklyn, uh, A Brooklyn State of Mind. That was with Danny Aiello and Tony Danza. Okay. And she's in a movie this year. So she's still acting. Uh, let me just pull this in some more, some more, uh, some more searching. Uh, American Night that came out, th- came out this year. She's the third lead in it behind Emil Hirsch and Jeremy Piven and Michael Madsen. Oh, okay. So th- this is 2021. So this is, she's still, still doing her thing. Oh, well, give it, you know, God bless. So another one. Yeah. Another one, not a household name, but probably I only knew her from this role. Oh yeah. I, Isabella. I, don't, I don't remember. I, once I see some of the credits, cause I've seen some of the things that you mentioned, I'll remember her in them, but this is what I know her for is Isabella. Yeah. And also, just got to just got to cite this. Uh, the second hitman was an actor named Touche, and this was his only acting credit. So it's possible after the botched hit, he just ran off and never came back. He maybe he was too scared. Maybe he's in witness protection right now. It's he- totally understandable. I would I would not hold it against him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So trivia. Uh, you want to yeah. go first? Or you want me to? I'll go first. All right. All right. Um, the Sopranos was one of the biggest budget shows of its time. Uh, one of the first TV shows to really be a big budget show. Mm-hmm. Um, how much did each episode cost to make? Was it a million, a million five, three million, or two million per episode? Mm, oh, yeah. Is this in general or for this season? Every single episode of the show. Wow. So it was consistent from yep. beginning to end. Beginning to end. I'm going to the, then three million. That was an option. That was an option. I'll, I'll shoot. I'll shoot for the fences here and I'll say three million. Okay. It was actually two million per episode. Ah, okay. All right. Makes sense. So two million per episode. I wonder, because you, rem- I remember hearing like the cast of Friends, like towards the end, was getting like two million dollars an episode. Well, that's per actor. That this is talking about the making it, not even the paying the actors. Like, okay, so that's separate. Everything went into everything that went into the episode, about two million dollars, I guess, with locations and everything. And- okay. All right, that's cool. Good to good to know. All right, so this episode was directed by Alan Coulter. Okay. He, it was the second one he directed the season. He also directed the episode, episode five, College. Okay. So he would go on to direct 12 episodes of the show. I think he stopped in season five. So he's he's a mainstay through, they have a lot of the same directors come through, and he's he directed 12 of the episodes. Mm-hmm. He's also directed a lot of other shows. So this is kind right. of, I, I've done a question like this before with uh Timothy Van Patten. Yes. So which of these shows has he not directed an episode for? Boardwalk Empire, Sex in the City, Succession, Ray Donovan, House of Cards, or Six Feet Under? Mm. Uh, I believe he's going to, I'm going to go with, I don't know if I'm right, but I'm going to go with succession. You got it. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, yeah, no six surprise. I mean, it's, it's early in the game. We're not to say we don't get some episodes by him directed later, but yeah, he hasn't gone there yet. He just did one six feet under. I think it, it was like season one. So he only, he only had one of those. Uh, he had a few boardwalk empires. I, yeah, was, I was between Succession and Ray Donovan because I was figuring maybe everything on HBO he's had a shot at. So I was going with, like, you know, maybe it could be the Ray Donovan, but I took the guess at Succession. Yes, good uh, good job there. 
Uh, we got our moments of truth on the episode here. Who who would you go with for MVP? Uh, I'm gonna let you go first. All right, I went I went with the low hanging fruit here. I just went Tony. Okay. I I don't know if that maybe you could have made a case for Olivia, but I I thought this was a strong Tony episode. Just his arc from depressed in the beginning to kind of just back on top by the end of it, or I, rising back to the top. I can respect that low hanging fruit right there. Um. I went Livia. Okay. I just thought that it was just like, basically you see her going to have one and dead, one and dead, one and dead. And then all of a sudden when it all fails and goes to shit, oh, my son, it's just like the, the two different things. And she was so good that she made Tony believe she had nothing to do with it. Right. Right. Yeah. She was really strong performance from her in this episode. Yeah, no, I, 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 if I didn't go Tony, I probably would have went Livia. So that was kind of like 1A, 1B. I, I agree with you. Uh, how many boxes is ZD for this one? I gave this one a solid eight. Uh, I thought it was a really great episode. Very good uh, action. I enjoyed the, the story in it. And it just like everything set up perfectly. Like I, I think everything set up for the season finale. I couldn't agree more. I just went a little higher, went eight and a half. Okay. But yeah, we're, we're, we're close there. So it, we're both in the eights. All right, hey, cool. Yeah, solid. Hey. I, I mean, a good bounce back after the last one. Mm-hmm. All right. Where's uh, where's some place people can follow you at? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Twinkie730. Or if you want to see me and my friends playing some games, uh, we're at arcade underscore wars at instagram uh we do some fun things we talk some shit and we play video games um got a competition coming up in a couple of weeks we're gonna be at yestercades cool cool uh what games are you playing uh don't know yet we pick them when we're there tbd all right nice like it yeah it's a good follow i follow it looks like you guys are having good times on there what about you dave the place they can catch you you can follow me at ddem2000 on both Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you can follow this show. We have an Instagram account for the, the podcast we're doing. It's at it's the jacket pod, all one word. Uh, if you want to talk Sopranos with myself, Anthony, or you want to talk about another show, another movie with either of us or a bunch of other cool people, you can join the movie and television talk Facebook group. Just type that into a group search on Facebook where the red cover photo. Uh, w- let me put you on the spot. What's the uh, what episode is next week? I dream of Jeannie Cusimano. Yes. Yeah, solid, solid finale. I, I watched it yesterday. So we're, we're coming to a close on season one. It's been fun. Oh, yeah. It's going to we're gonna have a jam packed episode with you for, for next week, guys. Uh, talking about our favorites of the season, some favorite quotes, some favorite episodes. And yeah. Stuff. Uh, for you so yeah definitely looking forward to uh wrapping up season one getting getting into getting into it on season two so we're just plowing through the show here all right well my friend it was good talking to you as always always is sir i will talk to you again next week We'll, we'll we'll pick it up next week everybody thanks for listening and take care good night everybody